say your piano's arrived. Yes. 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 Yes, I'll tell you. If you just like to take it straight through. Sorry. Down the end of the corridor to the far end of the gymnasium, and if you could just pop it on the platform. You just couldn't give me a hand down the step, please. Oh, right, yes. I'll take this end, shall I? Yes. Just he was all on his own. It's all right. I'll take care Thank of it. Thank you. I'll be all right. I'll just catch my breath. Well, you certainly took your time, didn't you? Sorry. I was told ten o'clock and he said... What is this? We think it's a piano, Mr. Britters. <laughs> no. We have a man travelling all the way from the Leningrad Conservatory to give his first concert in the free world. I think he deserves something better than the throw-out from the public bar of the dog and duck. <laughs> I was told I was going to get a concert grand. I'm very sorry, son. It's Don't it. you son me. It's Mr. Britters, the people who can't deliver the proper piano. All right, Mr. Britters. No. It's all right, my darling, with you in one moment. Now, did I ask for this piano? Well, I... No, I did not. Gordon. It's all right, darling. I want you to put this heat back on your van and get me a proper one. Gordon, this is your father. <laughs> Dad! Dad! What are you doing here, Dad? Oh, I'm sorry if I've called that a bad time. Uh... Mr. Britters. <laughs> this is my dad, everyone. I don't believe it. What are you doing with the piano? It's for you, Gordon. Your mother almost wanted you to have it. I won't have room for it, you see. Not now I'm moving into the sheltered accommodation. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I took it round to your house. But, but I you... said I thought you'd much rather have it in your office, Gordon. <laughs> Mum's old piano. Do you know she died while I was playing this? She's got all your music as well, Gordon. Our piano was burnt, wasn't it, darling? Yes, yes it was. Unfortunately, Helen took it out to the back garden to give it a good clean and accidentally spilled a bottle of white spirit all over it. <laughs> what happened then, darling? Well, we think it was a spark from the neighbour's bonfire, don't we? Yes, so it was. By the time I got back from work, it was just a pile of ashes. A piano again. That's wonderful, Dad. Oh, I'm glad you like it, son. <laughs> so, this is the new place, is it? <laughs> You've never been here, Mr Britters. No, no, no. I was hoping Gordon might be able to show me round, but... I can see you probably wouldn't have the time. <laughs> Listen to him. Of course I have. Always got time for me old dad. I've just got to make one quick phone call. We've got a concert on here tonight. A concert? Helen, I think a mug of tea and a biscuit and I'll be with oh, you in God. five minutes, all oh, right? That'll be grand, son. The restroom, I think, yes. Helen. This way, Dad. This is Carol, I'm a of the earth, Laura. Everything I am, I owe to that man. I must remember to thank him, Mr. Britters. <laughs> Julie, get those piano people on the phone for me. I want to know what's happening. I've already rung. So where's my concert grand? Nobody knows. It's been stolen from the warehouse in Croydon. What? It's all right. They've found you another one. They've had four men driving all night to bring it from Cardiff. So why isn't it here? Get me that number. Apparently they broke down in Swindon and had to carry the piano a mile and a half to where they could hire another van. <laughs> They've had quite a time behind the sound of it. But the man on the phone was very sorry. Judy, I'm afraid being sorry isn't always good enough. People do not spend good money on concert tickets to watch a man being sorry. <laughs> Hello, yes, Gordon Britters. Let me make my position perfectly clear. In about three hours' time, my gymnasium will be filled with several hundred people, many of them tremendously influential, expecting to hear a piano recital. No, you listen to me. It's arrived. What? The piano. They're just backing up the van to unload. Not before time. I don't believe it. Can't these people read? Hello? Yes, the van's outside. Well, he's just noticed they're using the disabled parking space. <laughs> Two days without sleep. Well, I'm sure Mr Bridges will be careful what he says. Yes. Piano's arrived. Yeah, no. Do you want to come and watch? This should be good. <laughs> Thirty staff? Has he really got thirty staff? I suppose it must be about that. Ooh, and all taking orders from my Gordon. It's amazing, isn't it? I think so, yes. Mm. He's certainly come a long way from Jellicoe Mansions, Romford. You're very proud of him, aren't you, Mr. Britters? Oh, no complaints, Laura. Both my boys have done well for themselves. There's another one? Oh, yes. <laughs> Twins. Gordon and Horatio. <laughs> I've no idea. Of course, Horatio went into the church. Yes, you probably read about him in the paper, Laura. The place where they had the knife fight during the Lenten vigil. 
<laughs> Sounds like a rough area. A little Chublington. Wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> They're a generous community, though. Raise a lot of money for missionary work. Oh, yes, that's the fun to send a ratio to the Lebanon, isn't it, Dad? <laughs> Do you know what he's done now? Gavin. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's refusing to take delivery of the piano unless they can guarantee it's not made of Brazilian hardwood. Gavin, this is Mr. Butcher's father. That man is a complete idiot. I... what? This is my father-in-law, Gavin. Mr. Butcher's? Yeah. Jim, please. Uh, hello. Uh, some sort of problem, is there? Um, no, nothing. Just, um, somebody's upsetting the piano movers rather a lot. Uh, tell you what I'd do. What? I'll get my Gordon onto that one. He's your man for sorting things out. <laughs> That's it, is it? We're just going to leave it here, are we? Just because someone happens to care about the South American rainforests. I wouldn't be surprised if that keyboard isn't ivory as well. It's bad news, I'm afraid, Mr. Britnos. What? About the flags. I'm extremely busy, Colin. I managed to get the Union Jacks at Rumblow's by British sale. <laughs> for a Russian flag. I've tried everywhere. Well, improvise, Colin. Make one. A hammer, a sickle and a piece of red cloth. Just be grateful he's not from Paraguay. Don't have to draw an armadillo or something. <laughs> Mr. Brittos, the other thing was the shelves. Colin, I have problems of my own at the moment. Oh, the piano's arrived. Very observant, Colin. <laughs> so, what's the problem? The problem is how a visiting pianist from Leningrad is going to play a piano that's stuck on its side in the middle of the main entrance. I see. Where's Gavin? <laughs> oh, there you are. Oh, ready when you are, son. Pardon? I'll just finish this mug of tea that young Ellen so kindly made me. <laughs> You're going to give your father a tour of the building, uh, Gordon? Yes, Dad. We're going to have to put that one on the back burner for a few more minutes, I'm afraid. Slight crisis outside. <laughs> Gabby, could you round up Tim and a couple of others and bring him out to reception, please? <laughs> yes, Mr. Brutus. Anything I can do, Gordon? Very nice of you to volunteer, my love. We have to move a piano. Rather heavy work for the female frame. Looking after you all right, is she dead? Oh, certainly is. In fact, Ellen was just saying... Excellent. <laughs> Is it all right if I still go home at seven? Home? Oh, why? If you remember, my stepmother and her two daughters are going to a rather grand ball. And they want me to stay at home and clean the kitchen. <laughs> right. You do realise that will mean missing the concert, don't you? Yes, Mr. Could you not touch that, please? <laughs> what? Could you not touch the piano, please? It's a rather valuable instrument, and if you don't know what you're doing, you could damage the tuning. <laughs> I am Vladimir Petrov. Yes, well, when you learn how to read English, you'll understand that we're closed today because we're having a concert. You... Mr Petrov! <laughs> Welcome to Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre, Gordon Britters. Not too hot for you, I hope. What? Well, you're more used to snow, aren't you? In Leningrad, I mean. Oh. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, perhaps you'd like to come to the gymnasium where you're going to be playing this evening. Thank you. Don't you touch that. I'll get one of the staff to move that for you. Carol? Yes, Miss Bridges. <laughs> How may I help you? Perhaps you'd like to take Mr. Petrov's suitcase to his dressing yes, room. Yes, yes. Please, I am quite able. No, no, no. You leave that to Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, between you and me, she needs the exercise. She's getting a little bit pudgy. I think she is a most attractive woman. <laughs> Who? Your Carol. Now, that's interesting, because over here we don't see anything attractive in her at all. <laughs> Your son's success means a lot to you, doesn't it, Mr. Bridges? Oh, it does, Laura. You see, see, I never managed to do much with my life. I've been... Well, let's be honest, I've been a failure, haven't I? Oh, you shouldn't say that, Dad. You've... You, you've raised a family, you've done all sorts of things. <laughs> do you know what I wanted most in the world when I was a teenager, Helen? No, I can't think. I wanted to be an astronomer. Really? Yeah. I was 15 years old and I asked my mum and dad if I could stay on at school and, you know, pass an exam or something. Mm. But dad 